All right. Hey, everybody. Initially, I was going to put this in hate line as sort of like a segment, but I think that there's actually quite a bit to talk about the more that I thought about it. And maybe approaching this with uh, some nuance instead of just like bashing you guys over the head with meme sound effects, may, maybe a better way of uh, approaching this this topic. So obviously what I'm talking about is the Thrasher x Lacoste collab. Man, okay, so I would like to say like, oh my god, this this came out of nowhere, like I... I can't believe that, that this happened, but really, I think that we've been building towards something like this for quite a while. Now, we're in a situation where it feels like the last like two or three years, modeling and high fashion brands have become more and more prevalent in the space of, of skateboarding. Like, our top level pros, you know, Uto just came out with like a, a photo shoot. Midler has been doing photo shoots. Ashad has been doing photo shoots. Nija has been doing photo shoots. Really quick, I'm just gonna try to get ahead of a co many comments that I'll probably receive on this video, which are gonna be like, well, you know, professional skateboarders have always been models. And yes, that is true. But in my opinion, when you look at the guys that were modeling as professional skateboarders, they weren't being hired explicitly because they were pro skaters. I absolutely think that that helps. Um, but, you know, guys like Alex Olson, Ben Nordberg, Dylan Reeder, um, these are guys that kind of already look like models, so it makes a lot of sense that you would book them. Um, when it comes to the people that are modeling now, like Yuto, for example, who just did a shoot, he's not getting booked because Yuto looks like a model. Sure, he's, he's not an, an ugly guy by any stretch, but he's getting booked because he has a million and a half followers on Instagram. Skateboarding is big enough to the point now where booking a, prof a top level professional skateboarder is just like booking a regular celebrity. Combined with the fact that these brands perceive skateboarding to be cool. There's a reason that I don't see Thrasher doing this as like a surprise. The seeds have been sown and I think that it has become increasingly more normal to see skateboarding being paired with high fashion. I know a lot of people say that they've been together, that the two things have been related for a long time. Fashion and skateboarding have been related for a long time. That's all fine and good. But at the top, the top, top level, I think that like the amount of exposure that these designer brands are getting in skateboarding right now, to me, seems to be higher than ever, from what I can tell. This whole video is going to be anecdotal. There's no data or anything like that. So... If you disagree, you have like a good counterpoint, feel free to, to leave it in the comments. This is just sort of how I see things from where I sit. The other reason that I am not really that surprised why Thrasher is doing this is because we all remember Thrasher for quite some time now, probably like five, six years at this point, has been randomly like a very trending fashion item within non-skaters where there might be one, two stores at the mall that have like Thrasher in their display windows and the people walking past buy it. And I don't think people really knew what it was. They just bought it because it looks kind of cool and it just beca became part of a trend cycle um, as, as is what happens sometimes. Let's be clear. Thrasher totally fucking bought in. They didn't start selling in fucking Forever 21 or anything like that, but they were down as fuck. Who knows how many how many fucking hoodies Thrasher was sending Zoomies weekly, but it, it was a pretty disgusting amount. So Thrasher was down to sell a bunch of gear to people that did not skateboard. In my personal experience, I think that the popularity of Thrasher and the Thrasher logo amongst non-skateboarders has waned a little bit. I think that it appears to be on the downward trend of its 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 trend cycle. I don't see like dads holding their toddlers wearing Thrasher as like a muscle tee anymore. Thrasher probably got used to having a certain amount of money um, at their disposal and I think that less money started coming in. So I think that they see the fact, this is all like total conjecture by the way, no evidence for any of this. Like usual, I'm just talking out of my ass. I think Thrasher probably saw that like designer stuff is becoming more and more normal and they see this as an opportunity to to make some more money. First thing, when I when I saw this and I think a lot of skateboarders probably had the same reaction, it was just like what the fuck, ew, this looks stupid. Um when you actually look at the thing, it's like 
yeah, this looks like a spoof. This doesn't look like something that Thrasher would want to do. I mean, you go, remember when Thrasher was really, like, when Thrasher was really popping, and still, like, the internet is just a wasteland of, like, horse shit. You can go on Redbubble, you can go on fucking Alibaba, you can go a anywhere you want, and you will see thousands of Thrasher spoofs and fake Thrasher collabs. The fact that these, like, that these companies were, like, ripping off, like, Thrasher and, like, without their consent, and now Thrasher is, like, putting guest ads in their own magazine definitely feels a lot like selling out or, or giving in. Okay, so here's a screenshot from 2017, which was probably like around the apex of Thrasher's popularity. Here, this is a garment that says Trippin'. This was produced by H&M, obviously. It's the Thrasher font. This is what Thrasher posted on Instagram as a response. Just got a letter back from H&M's lawyers. Here's an excerpt from their response. Fuck off, H&M. Respect the original. This is around the time that Thrasher was sending boatloads of merchandise to any and every mall skate shop. Technically speaking, Thrasher was playing by the rules and still only selling in skate shops. But I don't think that any of us really believe that Zoomies is a skate shop. So yeah, technically they didn't violate their own rules, but we all know what they were doing. Like, you open yourself up to this kind of plagiarism when you flood the market with your merchandise. Now, I'm not saying that that means that H&M has a right to rip them off or anything, but it feels pretty stupid to feign outrage when you're cashing in. Um, and I also think it's funny that they wrote respect the original fire emoji when I would argue the practices that Thrasher was engaging in by, you know, flooding zoomies with their clothing wasn't respecting the original. And now you look at the fucking how things are going currently, putting a Lacoste alligator uh, uh, underneath your logo certainly is not respecting the original. This is a, a hoodie for non-skateboarders uh in in my opinion like there really isn't any appeal as a skateboarder to adding the lacoste uh crocodile on on the hoodie for me if i wanted a thrasher hoodie and i'm into skateboarding i don't need the i don't need to pay 200 uh i i don't need to do that i can just buy a regular thrasher hoodie that represents my interest that is something that i would like to support that would be the end of the line for me i'm sure that many other skaters feel the same way they are selling the ethos and the appeal of thrasher to non-skateboarders they're adding something onto the logo that also appeals to non-skateboarders creating this bizarre mashup um, but i think that the people who would have bought thrasher before um, they ha now have another reason to buy Thrasher because Lacoste is for regular people. And now Thrasher is, is for regular people as well. They're working with Lacoste. So it's like, cool, I forgot about that Thrasher logo. Lacoste just made this, this hoodie. That's sick. The more that you s outsource your ethos and your reputation to non-skateboarding companies, the less desirable and the less impactful your logo will become. The, one of the reasons that Thrasher was a desirable um, company to collaborate with in the first place is because they represent a very strong subculture that a lot of like high fashion companies want to tap into. Oh, they're all about their aesthetic. They're all about being cool. And skateboarding is cool slash was cool um, and histor like historically has had a very strong subculture that has been very self-sufficient. You compare it against like a lot of other things like, like basketball, golf, um, hockey, you know, most traditional sports, they just rely on Nike, Adidas, the, you know, Under Armour, the massive sports companies, Nike pretty much fucking controls everything. In skateboarding, sure, Nike makes shoes here, Adidas makes shoes here, New Balance makes shoes here, but we also have a lot of other shoe companies. Um, shoes are something that I'm willing to like kind of, you know, let go of a little bit because, you know, some of these actual shoe companies really do know what they're doing. Um, but when it comes to, you know, it comes to pants, it comes to, you know, t-shirts, hoodies, hats, actual skateboards, uh, bearings, trucks, wheels, hardware, skateboarders make tons and tons and tons of fucking product for skateboarders and i think that that is extremely important and that's what keeps skateboarding somewhat insulated and and isolated is, is that we have people of our own community 
supplying other people in our community with products that we want, that we know that we want, that we don't have to go outsource to non-skateboarders. I think that that is a crucial function of what keeps skateboarding like kind of a special place. And that is why when you look at something like this, it gives you a bad feeling because you see that the ethos of skateboarding is being outsourced to a company like Lacoste, which really doesn't provide anything to skateboarding. They don't make wheels. They don't make decks. They don't make trucks. They don't even make skateboarding clothing. They just make clothing, period. Borrowing from like the culture of skateboarding to sell to non-skateboarders, that's a bad look. So in my opinion, I would discourage skateboarders from buying this shit. We already have people in skateboarding, actual skateboarders, making way cooler shit for skaters. This isn't for skaters. This is for this is for fucking normies. And I think that uh, Thrasher, which is supposed to be like the backbone of skateboarding, like you 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 kind of look at what what Thrasher represents. They they do the most videos. They they sponsor a, a bunch of shit. I mean, they're an aggregator. You you go to Thrasher kind of to see what's going down, and to see Thrasher doing this, I think is. A little bit disturbing and you look at thrasher's own branding it's like you know the the satanic goat fucking hell ride like blah 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 it's all about being fucking hardcore let's be honest let's be clear there's nothing hell ride about a thrasher lacoste collab nothing could be fucking further you know what does lacoste represent lacoste represents like croquet country club polos fucking plaid shorts like that isn't skateboarding thrasher is supposed to represent the core side of skateboarding like this is like what mikey alfred is like fucking pulling towards and this is why i hate him <laughs> that's why i fucking hate him mikey alfred wants to country clubify skateboarding why i have no fucking idea because he has some sort of weird fetish for it seeing thrasher doing this is like what the fuck did they hire mikey is he pulling the strings now it really doesn't make any sense. Thrasher's on a slippery slope right now. They're doing guest ads in, in the magazine. Now they're doing a Lacoste. Is this the beginning or is, is this the end? Because you can only go so far with this um, until it's until it blows up in your face. I mean, the problem for Thrasher is like the more collabs, the less cool you become, the more you sell out and dilute your own branding, the less power your branding will hold. And that's one of like the huge reasons that I, I hate collabs, especially when you like, you know, you outsource uh, to non skateboarders. Why, this is another reason why I think that, you know, like popularity cycles are prevalent in skateboarding because like money is very hard to refuse. And so people kind of like gradually sell out. And the what made skateboarding appealing in the first place, which is that it's like this heart, like this kind of core subculture thing. Um, and that's why, you know, people are attracted to it. The more you sell out and the more you outsource to non skateboarding companies and you sell the reputation to stupid fucking like to Lacoste and shit, the weaker the image of skateboarding becomes to the very people that you are like selling to and collaborating with. Bullshit in skateboarding is is always going to happen, but it's about it's it's about finding a balance where skateboarding can be um, sustainable. Nothing is like fully pure or unsullied, and skateboarding is not an exception to that. And I think that you have to allow some amount of money in the space to inject into the system so that you know everybody can keep their fucking lights on. I think that like you know skateboarding isn't a one hundred percent self sustaining industry. But it's way fucking more self-sustaining uh, than most um, that I have seen anyway. I've got an example here to like a counterpoint maybe to what I am saying. Um, and I just want to read this. It says, um, I think, and I'm not going to include her name because I don't know if she would want to be in my video. So I'm just going to read it as like, and, and if you wrote this and you would like to be credited, um, then leave a comment and I'll, I'll pin it. But um. I think every skater doesn't have to be a model slash walk a runway is the most boring possible thing anyone could be debating. Skaters enjoy fashion. I don't know why it's surprising to you with social media being as prevalent as it is that skaters would be interested in those opportunities. Brands would be interested in working with them. It's also annoying that every week we have to entertain a new old head purist hot take about what skaters are allowed and not allowed to do. So... If you look at like what the top guys in skateboarding are doing and the fact that they are like interested in modeling and fashion, like I mentioned, Nija, Ishad, Yuto, Midler, these kinds of guys like 
I think as the top level skaters, not only are they tastemakers in the scene of skateboarding, but they also are representatives of skateboarding to people that do not skateboard. So to some degree, maybe a small degree, but to some degree, the actions of our top level pros slash our representatives, those, those actions reflect upon the rest of us as a community, and I think they undeniably have ripples. If Utah wasn't modeling, if Nigel wasn't modeling, if Midler wasn't modeling, if Ashad wasn't modeling, I don't think this would have happened. So you see Thrasher, which is supposed to be the core backbone, now participating in like dumb sellout behavior. Like, I think that it's very reasonable for skaters to have opinions about this and to discuss it. I think that shutting down that conversation because it's interpreted as an old head take you're kind of reducing the the impact and in my opinion at least um you're you're sort of being naive about like how fragile this whole thing kind of is so everybody's entitled to their opinion and i'm offering my counter um because i do not agree in skateboarding there probably needs to be some degree of collaboration with outside um companies from time to time i'm i'm okay with i'm okay with that with that being the case but like the more and more that we do and the more common it becomes, the thing that we all care about is undeniably going to become less cool. It's also like if you are going to collaborate with a non-skateboarding company, that company should at least show some kind of vague interest in contributing to skateboarding in some way. Like the reason that this really feels like an ultimate sellout move is because it's fucking Lacoste. Like, okay, Red Bull, Monster, Rockstar, all of these fucking like energy drink companies, at least they like sponsor and pay skateboarders. So yeah, it's kind of corny to have a Monster sponsorship, but at least they actually like concern themselves with skateboarding. Lacoste literally has fucking nothing to do with skateboarding. So to see Thrasher collaborating with them who have everything to do with skateboarding is fucking mind boggling. At the end of the day, like, I think that skateboarding is going to be okay. I think that, that skateboarding is probably always going to bounce back in, in some way or another because fundamentally the thing that we actually all care about, which is like riding a skateboard, that sort of remains ultimately like the actual act of riding a skateboard remains unchanged by any of this, this shit, the actual physical act of doing it. But I also think that if you pretend like these things don't affect people and how blown out skateboarding becomes, um, I think you're deluding yourself. So, you know, basically my theory is this. I think skateboarding should be as self-sufficient as possible. As, as pure as we can keep skateboarding while still paying people, that is the objective in my opinion. I see this as being completely unnecessary. I don't see Lacoste as providing any fucking value to the average skateboarder whatsoever, which is why I reject it. There is no logical basis for me to accept this into um, the things in skateboarding that I am willing to tolerate. Like, absolutely not. So, to give you an example that may be overly literal, like, I am okay with Yuto at Street League um, wearing a Louis Vuitton belt as long as it's holding up some polar pants. Do you understand what I'm saying? As long as the main things in skateboarding are still run by skaters and skaters are, are making them and skateboarders are pulling the strings and skateboarders have control over skateboarding, at the end of the day, that is the most important thing. Um, however, I still think it is absolutely worth discussing and absolutely worthwhile when I think that we deviate from that and we start go going into areas as a community where I don't personally, I see no value. I see no value in this at all. I just think that the Thrasher logo is once again being sold to people that have no idea what it is um, and have no idea what it is supposed to represent. Um, and what it represents will become more and more diluted and diminished the more this kind of bullshit happens. So essentially, disappointed in, in, in Thrasher um, would in my opinion, don't really want to see this anymore. Um, like I said, looks like a fucking spoof that you'd see on, on Redbubble or Alibaba. Um, it's, it's pretty fucking whack. So just look at the comments on Instagram of Thrasher's post with this Thrasher X Lacoste. 
people are fucking pissed. Um, this is not the type of thing that you expect from Thrasher Magazine, which is supposed to be like a cultural epicenter um, and a guiding light in skateboarding. I don't think there's any anchoring force at Thrasher right now, which is keeping it on the right track. And that's why I think this bullshit is happening. People do this all the time. People like to say for all kinds of reasons, big or small, whenever Thrasher does something wrong, people will say like, oh, well, you know, Phelps would have never let this happen, this or that. And to some what degree, I don't know what is true and what Phelps would have tolerated and what he wouldn't have tolerated. What I will say is, in from what I have seen over the course of Thrasher, this is the furthest that they have strayed from like core skateboarding and what I understand Thrasher's original intent to be. This is way fucking off base. And I think that, like, to produce a hoodie like this, which they did when when Phelps passed, still watching, if he is still watching, what the fuck do you think he thinks about these? To produce that hoodie and then wait a few years and then to produce this, a lot of people say that Phelps was, like, one of the best things to ever happen to skateboarding. Um, some people really don't care for Phelps. Um, I don't fucking know enough to and I'm not going to pretend like I do know enough what I will say is based off of what I understand about Phelps the interviews that I heard um and my very vague understanding of his impact on skateboarding at the very least when it came to skateboarding he was principled he knew what he liked and he knew what he didn't like there's no fucking way he would like this if Th if Phelps was still walking around today he would not be wearing Thrasher X Lacoste. That's for goddamn sure. Anyway, that's basically what I think about this. Um, Thrasher, you guys are fucking shitting the bed.